so good to be celebrating Easter with you today. I mean, that's what we're celebrating, right? The greatest story ever told. Um, you know, we may be apart, but we're together on that. We may not be sitting next to each other in a sanctuary, but we are together. We may not have a pastor right now, but the church is still alive and well. Good morning, church. Well, let me tell you what we're going to do here this morning with the rest of our time. I'm going to give you a message in six parts. Now, before you say six parts, I'm out of here and go click on to Netflix. Um, let me tell you that it's going to be six bullet points. And also, I'm, we're going to separate those out. I'm going to give you the first three points of the message today. Then we're going to uh, have a time to worship and, and, and sing together. And then I'll come back for the next three points of the message. Don't worry, I'll get you back to binge watching your favorite show um, in no time, or, or watching the Cubs win the World Series again, or if you're a Cardinal fan like me, watching Game 6, the World uh, 2011 World Series. I, that was fun to watch, but uh, you know we got bigger things to talk about this morning. You'll be digging into that Easter dinner in no time. <laughs> you know, throughout history, there's never been a more powerful event than the resurrection of Jesus. He did what no other man, no other religion could do. He conquered death. And he still lives today. You know, critics have tried to, hard to poke holes in the resurrection story, and skeptics have tried to prove that it's not true. But yet, his power still impacts. It still changes lives today. You know, when our life group was meeting before the uh, stay-at-home order, we were... Uh, studying a, a movie called The Case for Christ. And if you're not familiar with it, it's a, a story based on a book by Lee Strobel. And Lee Strobel is an award-winning, was an award-winning uh, writer for the Chicago Tribune. He's also an atheist. And so when his wife becomes a Christian, he sets out to prove that Christianity is wrong because he wants his wife back. And he doesn't know exactly where to start, so one of his fellow reporters tells him, who happens to be a Christian, he says, why don't you just go for the jugular? Because the center of the Christian faith, the Christian faith relies on the resurrection of Christ. If you prove that false, Christianity is meaningless. In fact, the Apostle Paul said exactly that in 1 Corinthians 15, if you want to take a look at that. Um, so Lee Strobel goes out, he sets out, he gets his reporter's hat on and gets his notebook in hand and goes out and interviews experts all over the country hoping to prove himself right. But what he finds out is the exact opposite. He finds out that there's overwhelming evidence that the resurrection of Jesus, that Jesus' death on a cross did happen. And so when he's confronted with those facts, he's left with nothing else, but he eventually gives his own heart to Jesus. He becomes a Christian, he becomes a pastor even, and becomes one of the greatest Christian apologists of our time. You know, Jesus did indeed rise from the dead. Now that's a, that's a great movie to see. If you haven't seen it, um, I'd recommend it. You can see it on Netflix, you can stream that on Netflix now. It'd be a good one to watch even on Easter. But we obviously hear more about the resurrection at Easter than any other time. But the resurrection story is not a story just to be thought about one time a year. You know, for every believer, whether we recognize it or not, the resurrection is a daily thing in our life. It's a, it's a, a daily truth. It's our lifeline. Our, it's our hope. The fact, the very truth that Jesus rose from the dead reminds us that no matter what we're going through in this present time, no matter what we've been and what has happened to us in our past, no matter what unknowns are there in the future, Christ alone is our hope. He did indeed resurrect from the dead. That's exciting. That's a great news for us. And so here are six things that we as Christians, um, the resurrection does for us in our daily lives. Now these are six things that, that we as Christians should know about, but... A good, healthy reminder is that never hurts, right? And if you're here today and you haven't given your heart to Christ, these six hopefully will be uh, something that would challenge you to, to maybe 
Give your heart to him today. Well, the first thing that the resurrection of Jesus does is it tells us who Jesus is. In Romans 1, 4, Romans 1, 4 says, And he who was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing like the power of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead to tell an entire world, to show an entire world he is who he said he is. He's King. He's Lord. He's Savior. He's all of those things. And there have been many false prophets throughout time that have claimed to be God and have led people astray, but not one of those gave up their life for an entire world. And not one of those was resurrected three days later. You know, the Pharisees, and in Matthew chapter 12, the Pharisees asked Jesus for some proof that he is who he says he is. And Jesus said this in, in Matthew 12. In Matthew 12, verses 39 and 40, Jesus says this, A wicked and adulterous generation ask for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a, fit, a great fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. His death, burial, and resurrection prove that he is the real deal. The second thing that the resurrection of Jesus does is it offers us salvation. Now that's the message of the Easter weekend, right? That's the, that's the message, that's the gospel right there. The message of the cross is that Jesus paid the penalty for our death when he took on our sins on the cross. He took our place so that we could be saved, so that we could have a right relationship with God again. He's the ultimate sacrifice because he never did sin, not even once. So he's the only one that could do it, and he did it. And you know the power of what the power of that resurrection means? He's not dead. He's not in that tomb anymore. He's there with us. And that means that Jesus broke through all of that. And, and that same Jesus who showed those with those nail-scarred hands, when he reached out with those nail-scarred hands then, is the same Jesus that reaches out to us today. Death couldn't hold him. But it's more than just knowing the facts about Jesus in your head. It's about believing in your heart. That's when real change happens in a person's life. That's when real change happens when we take it into our heart. And it becomes who we are. It changes whatever we do. He came to seek and save all of those who are lost. The third thing that the power of the resurrection does for us in our daily lives, is it gives us hope. We can have hope, and everybody wants hope, right? We need hope. And first, in Ephesians 1, 18 through 20, says this, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Because his power over death is a living hope. The power and the hope that Christ offers us is constant. It's active. It lasts forever. It doesn't depend on us. It doesn't depend on what we can do. It only depends on Him. In this crazy world, we're going to go through times. We're going to go through times where, where we're going to struggle. We're going to go through hard times in our life. Where those anxieties and those fears may even get the best of us. And we may even seemingly feel like we don't have any hope anymore. And that's understandable. We all go through those moments. We don't know what's going to happen, but we know the one who does, don't we? I have to admit that I've had my moments where I've let anxiety and fear get the best of me. Um, I'd hate to admit it, but I have. In fact, 
Um, as many of you know, we had a house fire just a few few weeks back, a few months back, and and I have to admit that I let the stress of all of that get the best of me. I mean, we we had we were in the sa same time that that happened. We we were going through a refinancing loan, and and we had just had our roof redone and all of those things were, were up in the air and, and we had deadlines coming and everything had to be done at a certain time and, and I let those fears and anxieties get the best of me. I don't like to admit that, but I did. But throughout that whole time, I kept going over scriptures in my head, God's promises in my head, because ultimately I knew the hope, the true hope that I had. And I knew who was going to get me through, get us through that time. And he did see us through that time and blessed us amazingly through that. Now, it's something I don't want to go through again, but God did bless. And he is and he was our hope. Sometimes, too, you know, we put our hope in other people or in other things. But you know, people are going to let us down. Things are not going to last. Money is not going to last. It's here today, gone tomorrow. They don't last. The only thing that is going to last, give us living hope, is Christ. Christ gives us that living hope. He is stronger than any of the things that, that we can lose in this life. He defeated the powers that seek to pull us away from Him. And if you're struggling to find hope today, ask Him for help. He is our hope. You know, he has said that he will provide all that we need to live strong and free in this life. In fact, 2 Peter 1.3 is one of my favorite verses. It says, his divine power has given us everything. Not just some things, not just a few things, but his divine power has given us everything we need for godly life through our knowledge of him. So that's the first three points of what the resurrection can do for us in our daily lives. Now let's worship Him in song. God sent His Son They called Him
isn't it? Well, let's get back to uh, the things that the resurrection do for us in our daily lives. The fourth thing that the resurrection can do for us in our daily lives is we can have the power of Christ today. We can have the power of Christ in us today. Acts 4.33 says, And with great power the apostles were given their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon, all, upon them all. The resurrection offers us, as believers, the promise that God is with us and God is for us. His word is full of reminders that nothing that we can face in life is greater than his power. He gives us a confidence we need to hold on so that when we feel weak, when we have those moments of weakness, we can rely on his strength. It's his strength that gets us through. He works in our lives even in times when we don't feel like He is or we don't realize that He is. He's still working in our lives. And, and we can be rest assured that more than ever, He's working in our lives right now through all of this. That same power, that same power that the apostles had when they were miraculously changed after the resurrection and went out sharing that gospel, that same power is within us today as we accept and believe in him all we have to do is live in that truth recognize it and realize that it's not about us it's about him the fifth thing that the resurrection does for us is it reminds us that we have the promise of eternal life in him in heaven first peter 1 3 through 4 says this all praise to god the father of our lord jesus christ it is by his great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. You know, it's easy to go through life without an internal focus. We get so caught up in the, the here and now and, and living day to day that we we don't, we forget to live with our lives and our, our eyes and our hearts focused on what's most important. Jesus reminds us through his resurrection that there's a place for every believer in heaven with him. He's saving a place for us. It's not going to fade away. It's there for us. He said in this world we'll have troubles. But you know what? He didn't stop right there. He said, in this world we'll have troubles. But he said, take heart. I have overcome the world. The sixth and final thing that the resurrection reminds us and does for us in our daily lives today is it reminds us that he's coming again, church. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 14. It says, for since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. God reminds us that because of Christ's victory over death and through his resurrection, that there is new life both in this life and in the life to come in heaven. His word promises that Jesus will come again. We don't know when that's going to be. We just have to believe his word that he is coming again. 
And be ready. Be ready, church, for when he does. Through his word, we have the promise of a new resurrected body, united with Christ, free from suffering and pain. And that's an awesome promise that we have in his scripture. Isn't it? Let's live in the truth and in the power of the resurrected Jesus. He is risen. Let's pray together. He is risen indeed. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for that power. We thank you for the power of the resurrection, what the resurrection means to us in our daily lives, Lord. We thank you for the strength that it can give us. We thank you for the guidance that it can give us in uncertainty. And we pray that, Lord, you guide us in this uncertain time. Father, in, a, in this uncertain time of our country, and in this uncertain time of our church, Lord, as we go and look for a new pastor, Lord, we pray that you would just guide us to do and be who you have called us to be and who, what you have called us to do. God, you are a great and mighty God, and we thank you for being with us in this time. We thank you, Lord, again for the power that you have given us, the reminder that you rose again, that you have power through whatever comes our way. We thank you for being with us. In your name I pray. Amen. So church, let's live in the power of his resurrection. Thank you for, for being a part of this. Thank you for joining with us on this Easter Sunday. May you celebrate a great Easter. And remember that Jesus is a, has risen. He's alive and well. And he can guide us throughout our lives. Go and just enjoy yourself today. And we'll be back soon together. Can't wait for that time. God bless you.